on same leaf. Then we discuss leaf nose destination. And the condition was destination on the remote leaf. Then we have discussed leaf doesn't know a destination. Okay. In this, we have discussed bridge domain two options one hardware proxy and flood option then i have discussed layer two packet forwarding and layer three packet forwarding I clear we have already discussed these things now, I'm just doing a recap 10 to 15 minutes so that all things will be recalled once again. And then I will add in this the bounce entry and the advanced options. Okay. Can I clear or do you want to take the screenshot? Okay. <laughs> Let's discuss the case number one. Leaf knows the destination and the destination is on the same leaf. So, Twenty dot zero dot one, twenty dot zero dot zero dot two, twenty dot zero dot zero dot three, and let's say thirty dot zero dot zero dot one. No. So there will be the LST. Here will be the LST local station table. So in that there is a information. Let's say one slash one, one slash two. 1 slash 1, 1 slash 2. So here MAC address is let's say AAA, here BBB, MAC address CCC, and MAC address DDD. So in the LST, there is a information on 1 slash 1, there is a MAC AAA, and it is having IP address 10.0.1. Then 1 slash 2, BBB. 20.0.0.2. Here there will be the information 1 slash 1 connected on CCC. 20.0.3. 1 slash 2. MAC address DDD. 30.0.0.1. With the help of POOF protocol. This LST information will reach to the spine. And spine will make one entry AAA 20.0.0.1 20 
present on leaf 101 interface 1 slash 1. BBB 20.0.2 leaf 102 1 slash 2. PCC twenty dot zero dot zero dot three leaf one zero two one slash one D D D thirty dot zero dot one leaf one zero two one slash two this database is known as PST proxy station table or you can say scoop database here once they communicate with each other so in this there will be one gst table also create which will like this way ccc having 20.0.0.3 and it received by some tunnel information let's say tunnel a ddd 30.0.1 tunnel a and here there will be aaa 20.0.0.1 Channel 8 PBB 20.0.0.2 channel 8. Now, in this situation, the point number one, the leaf knows the destination, destination on the same leaf or maybe on the remote leaf. So let's say I'm on the PC1 and if I try to ping 20.0.0.2, what will happen? Traffic will go to the leaf. Leaf firstly check LST. It will automatically get that information. Okay, 20.2 directly connected with me on the interface 1 slash 2. So the traffic is not going into the ACI fabric. It will forward directly. Local switching will happen. This particular case clear? That's clear. Take yeah, the screenshot clear. of this. It's done. Now, case number two, I'm going to communicate with 20.3 now. Okay, so 20.3 present here on the remote leaf. And how I get to know that thing, it is on remote leaf. I will run a command, show endpoint. So under the show endpoint, it will give me that thing. It present on a another leaf. I'm getting that information via the tunnel interface. Okay. So when I'm running that command, sending the traffic, so traffic is going here. Then traffic go to LST database. Then it check the GST also. Under this GST, it will get to know that thing. Okay, 20.3 can be reachable by the tunnel A. And this tunnel 8 is already present here. Okay, so when the traffic is coming here, it will forward that tra traffic to this tunnel and via the tunnel, it will reach here. Like this way. Okay, because on the same leaf, I have that information this present on this particular leaf. Getting my point? Yeah, that's that's clear. Okay, take the screenshot. Okay. Next point. Leaf.
doesn't know destination. So what will happen in that case? In that case, this GST information will be not present. Okay, so here what will happen? Let's say you ping 20.3. So what will happen now? The traffic is forwarded here. Okay. It checked the local station table. It is not having the information into the GST. Okay. Not into the LST, not into the GST. Then it checked the BD option. What is BD configuration? Under the BD, there are two options. One is hardware proxy. Another option is flood. By default, hardware proxy is enabled. So what do you mean by the hardware proxy? So case number one, then DD hardware proxy enabled. So in this situation, traffic come here, Checking the LST, BD, hardware proxy. So that traffic is forwarded to the spine. Spine is having that information. Okay, this present on leaf 102. It forward the traffic here. It check the LST. And it forward the traffic. It will forward the reply. Return traffic. Once this return traffic received, then it created tunnel. Okay. Then only the information will be updated here. So. 20.0.0.3 having CCC received by the tunnel leaf. Getting my point? After that, my leaf knows that information. So next traffic wire going via the tunnel only. Getting my point? Yes. Take the screenshot. Okay. Next option is when flood enable. If you enable the flood, same example. Flood meaning is what? within BD within the BD okay in the hardware proxy we are forwarding that traffic to the spine okay but this time the traffic will be not forwarded to the spine it will flood within the BD that one BD can be associated with multiple EPG and in that EPG, if we have the 100 endpoints, so traffic will go to all those 100 endpoints. Okay? So the traffic can go here, can go here. Okay? They will simply drop that traffic and it will give reply. Getting my point? Yes. In the flood, if we have the multiple spine switches, one of the spine switch will become the root. Okay? which will basically forwarding the uh, 
traffic to all the uh, leaf devices, right? And that only one route will be elected just to avoid the looping into the ACI fabric. Okay. Take that screenshot. Now take another scenario. Let's say here one ESXi server connected. Here also one ESXi connected. And here also we have ESXi. Okay. In that ESXi, I have 100 of virtual machines. There and somewhere we have, let's suppose, the V center. V center is managing the ESXi 1, 2, and 3. Okay. I have Let's say DVS switch one, DVS switch two. I have this menu. Any confusion in the diagram? I have three servers, which is managed by the V center, and we have certain distributed switch. Okay. And there are the VMs. VMs are connected with the port glue. Clear my point. Any yeah. confusion? Okay. So far clear. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Now everything is working fine, no issues. So if you check here, LST database, there will be the one, two, three, four VMs information will be there. Right. Currently, this distributed switch not connected with the ESXi2, so there will be no entry. Now here LST will be what? Let's say five, six, seven, eight. Like this.
we have this condition right now. Here LST, I have only information about four, three, correct. Now, in this example, let's suppose the traffic is working fine. All the endpoints are able to communicate. Like, okay, you have created the contract. Everything, everything is working fine. Okay. Now, in virtual network, in the VMware or in let's say Hyper V. Normally, we are moving a VM from here to there in any data store based on like, okay, maybe that particular data store is having uh, certain storage issues or memory issues on the server. So we are moving that thing, which is known as the V motion. Getting my point? Now, let's take an example. I move this particular VM from here to here. I remove that VM from here and I move it here. So what will happen in this LST that information can stay in 900 in second. And similarly here on the PST I have the information. In the PST, there is the information endpoint one present on leaf 101. But that is actually moved to the another leaf. So this is having third information also. It will update that thing. Okay, three is also present on 103. So this switch, the spine switch will check. Okay, who is having the valid information right? Okay, so it will identify that thing. Okay, now the endpoint one move to the leaf three. So whatever information I have previously, right, that is not the correct. So what it will do, it will mark that entry as a B here, bounce entry. It will not flush, but just mark as a bounce. Okay, so if any traffic is coming for the, let's say, uh, this is sending ping PC1. So at that time, what will happen? It previously it learned from the B on, uh, sorry, on leaf A, it identified that thing, it is a bounce entry. So it will check where is bounce now. So it will give that information to the spine. Spine will tell, okay, it present on the leaf three now, so the traffic will reach here. Once this communication four to one is complete, automatically one VXLAN tunnel will be created, and the wrong entry will be removed from here permanently. Getting my point? Getting my point? Yes. Yes. This Sorry. Is the this concept is known as bounce entry or endpoint moving. Okay. We have very good example for this. Let me just show you. Bounce entry. This. Leaf one, two, three. Okay. Leaf two is having one endpoint IPB MACB. It advertised that information to the spine via the COOP protocol. COOP protocol will build the COOP database on the spine. Both the spine knows MAC and IP present on the Leave to no issues to me. After that, this Mac or this IP endpoint move from leaf two to leaf three. Then 
leaf 3 will advertise that information to the spine via the coop protocol so what this coop will do coop database endpoint b remove to the leaf 3 endpoint b move to leaf 3 okay it updated that information it update that information to b also okay remove that information from your local endpoint okay because that is present on the leaf 3 but what about this particular leaf this particular leaf is having that information till 300 second because previously it learned that information via the remote endpoint learning and it can stay that information till 300 second okay so what will happen now when the traffic is sent right so it will mark as a b so if you check show endpoint vrf tk is the name of tenant and the vrf1 so you will get b here b meaning is that bound sent okay and you can reach via the tunnel 4 okay so if any traffic is coming to a for any endpoint b then it will mark them as a b and it forward the traffic to the tunnel 4 okay we have one more example here a very good explanation is the before endpoint this endpoint 1 endpoint 2 they are able to communicate okay so endpoint 2 information endpoint 2 information is present here so on that particular leaf into the gst database this information can stay 300 second because that is a remote information okay now what will happen this is <coughs> first condition now you move this endpoint from here to here so it will give update to the spine spine update those information but the leaf one that it will not get that update okay so endpoint move bounce entry on the leaf two so when the endpoint move here in his lsc that information ip2 mac2 that can stay into the 900 seconds so just to avoid that particular long time what it will mark it will mark as a b bounce entry okay bounce meaning is what it moved from my switch to any another switch if you want to reach then check which tunnel is present there okay the packet ip2 use a bounce entry okay so what will happen if this particular endpoint sent any traffic ping endpoint 2 so what it will do it will check their lst or gst it will get that information okay it present on leaf 2 so it forward the traffic to the leaf 2 leaf 2 check that thing no i have marked them as a bound and you can reach via any tunnel so it will redirect that thing to the actual endpoint getting my point this point is clear guys clear for me once this communication will complete then This endpoint A also update that information. Now it present on leaf four. This is known as basically what endpoint. And normally this thing happen 
in the production environment into the virtual environment. That virtual environment can be your Microsoft, can be your VMware, can be your Red Hat, or any another environment. Getting my point? Yeah. Question. Yeah. Tell me. What's the lifetime of the bounce center? Very good question. <laughs> Let me just show you that thing first. By default, there is a endpoint retention policy. Okay. Let me show you that thing first. Where is that? And then we will discuss those kind of things. When you create the BD, automatically one retention policy will be there. Endpoint retention policy. Okay. By default, there is a default policy is there. This is the remote endpoint, local endpoint, and the bounce endpoint. Getting my point? Uh, 100%. Thank you. Okay. If you want to change this timer, because 900 second is a huge timer into the production, right? So you can change this timer also. You can create, uh, like, uh, you can give any name and you can change these timers. And after that, you can call this policy here. Endpoint retention policy. Okay. Clear this thing. It's clear. Okay. Cool. Now do one thing. In slice your discovery number two. Verify the bounce entry. Start your discovery two. It takes almost I think so twenty minutes to start. So in the meanwhile, I will discuss the theoretical portion and once it will be started, then we will do this lab activity. So today we will do discovery two, three, four and five also. We'll try to finish till five. Five will complete your transit routing as well as your layer three LP out. Should I share that credential once again? To access the lab, you have to log in here. So should we just start the lab now? Or? No, just start the lab, discovery two. Discovery two. Once it started, let me know. Then I will continue the theoretical portion. I have started. Okay. How much time it is showing? Nine hours, I think. Sorry? 944, 945. Time remaining. No, no. That's the uh, time for the Surely lab. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay, cool. Amazing. Hey, mine has just shown stuck. I don't know. Nine hours you are getting in the top. That is telling that thing every day you have the 10 hours of the lab access. So you just started. So how much time is remaining right now? For the day. Oh, that okay. nine hours is four. Okay. 
So what they are doing into the bound central equation. Now, they have this particular physical network. One spine, two leaf connected with a catalyst switch with one slash one and one slash three is connected with a ESXi server. Getting my point? On that ESXi, they are connecting with a standard switch. Guys, what is the difference between the standard switch and distributed switch? Anyone? This is the VMware concept. What is the standard switch and what is the distributed switch? Anyone? Um, a distributed switch is extended across uh, more than one host. More than one? More than one host. Correct. So, standard switch will be, you can say, local to host distributed switch can be spanned across two or more hosts okay Distributed switch can be created by V center only, whereas standard switch will be created by the host only. Getting a point? Third difference on the standard switch, you can connect the virtual machine for the same host. Whereas in the distributed switch, you can connect the virtual machine from the different host also. Clear? Any questions between the standard switch and the distributed switch? Was clear. Okay. okay. So here what they are doing, they have created two standard switch. Standard switch A, standard switch B. And on that, they are creating a port group. Okay, they are creating two port group there, VLAN one, uh, sorry, VLAN thirteen and eleven. Okay, then they are moving this web virtual VM from this standard switch to this standard switch. Okay. So they are checking the concept of bound entry here. How? In this, there are some pre-configuration. When you start the lab, this particular configuration will be already there. Okay. So they are logging into the vCenter, ESXi host, and they are checking show endpoint VRF sales. Sales is what? The name of the tenant and pre-sales VRF. So under this, they will get to know that thing, all these endpoints, okay, which is directly connected. Then, few endpoints I'm learning from the Ethernet 1 slash 3, that is local, and few endpoints I'm learning from the tunnel 2, which is my remote end. Then they are verifying the tunnel. The tunnel is up. Okay, then migrate this VM to another switch. Okay, and examine the bounce entry. So what they are doing, they are going into that EPG static port and they are defining this thing. They are changing the location basically. Okay, to the 11. Okay. After that, they are doing what? 
mapping with the correct uh, port group after that they are checking that thing and on the local leaf a when you move it will show you as a capital b capital b meaning is what the bounce end okay and that bounce you can reach via the tunnel 6 On the B, where that particular VM moves right now, that will be the local endpoint. Okay. Local. After that, they are just removing that. So it's a simple lab for the Then we have a concept of NIC teaming. What is that NIC teaming, guys? Anyone? Um, what is the meaning of this is like NIC teaming? Ignorance of uh, this very like car person of this very brand or in large purpose. Correct. So this is what server. So let's suppose you have configured a VPC here. Okay. So when you configure the VPC here, you can make a port channel. Okay. So here it can work as a active active link. That also works. Maybe on these two leaf switches, you are going to configure, let's say, HSRP. So maybe that link one will become active and another will become the standby. Okay. Then if you are going to configure the port channel here, normal port channel. Okay. So basically NIC teaming is to do the port channel configuration on the server side. Getting my point? So under this LAN card property, you have to select the protocol. Either you can go with the LACP protocol or you can put mode on. Okay. Under the port channel, we have two protocols, LACP and PAGP. Okay. So, PAGP is not supported in any of the Nexus product, right? So that's why you have to configure here LACP, okay? And doing the configuration on the port channel configuration on the server known as the NICP. Now, very important options as per to the production environment and point optimization okay so under this first option is limit ip learning to the subnet this option is on the bridge domain level bridge domain level okay where is that one Let's say they are talking on this three sales BD policy journal and limit local IP learning to BD and EPG subnet. What is the meaning of this particular point? Let's suppose if we have this scenario.
here we have let's say 20.0.0.1 30.0.0.1 under my bd i have defined a subnet 20.0.0.254 okay now limit ip subnet in bd if you enable this option so what will happen in my lst i will learn the ip and mac to only those subnets which are defined under my bd getting my point so under this lst it will learn only this it will not learn b getting my point yeah but this leaf under gst it will learn the information of b by the remote learning mechanism locally it will not learn but remotely it will learn getting my point limit ip learning to the subnet if limit ip learning to the subnet is enabled the local endpoint will be limit the ip only ip addresses that for the subnet are configured into the bridge domain so whatever subnet you configure under the bd only those endpoints will be learned this option does not limit the remote endpoint learning that means on the remote leaf let's say leaf 102 leaf 103 that information will be automatically propagate via the pooh protocol okay this option is telling that thing i will not put that information in my lst but it will go to the spine and spine 2 it can go to the leaf also this option is enabled by default getting my getting my point any confusion in this particular statement anyone no, i'm okay. Oh, okay okay and why this particular option because let's say uh sometime it happens let's say we are connecting that thing with the uh, you can say aci leaf with the ethernet endpoint right so connecting with a normal ethernet switch and from that ethernet switch i am learning thousand of mac addresses let's suppose so it will unnecessary reach to the leaf and it will consume my internal uh, cp utilization memory so just to avoid that kind of scenarios right we can enable this option getting my point this option came into the first generation switches first generation switches okay now two more important points if this option enabled on the bridge domain that had option that is disabled firstly the option is enabled and now you disabled it okay what will happen the end point that do not belongs to the bridge domain subnet are flushed automatically removed from that particular bd if this option is disabled on the bd that had the option that is enabled this ko aci does not flush So they are giving one 
picture like that way. So firstly, on that leaf A, I have endpoint one, two, and three. So endpoint one is having this particular BD. They define this subnet, and they enable this option. So this leaf, leaf one, is learning the IP MAC only for ETH one slash. Here we don't have 192.168.2.254. That's why it is not learning the IP address here. But this leaf will learn that information automatically. Clear this option. Limit IP subnet. Any question in this one, Lord Wayne? This point is clear. Should I repeat once again, Lonchi? So the uh, last second is for like two minutes, but I'm okay. Okay. Check your uh, labs started. Lab started, guys. Yes, mine has loaded. Okay, complete the lab because today we have to do lots of labs, so we will do the lab parallelly. Okay. Okay. Everyone complete the discovery number two. Hello. Yeah, just a second. Just a second. Okay. Just refresh that. Uh -huh. Just refresh that one. Refresh this page. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. For a little bit of. Now one single click. One single click. Just give me one second, Lord Win. Let me just take okay. the screenshot of this. I need to raise the ticket in Cisco.
Can I stop sharing? Yeah, you can stop sharing. No issues. I'm raising a ticket for you. Lord Bin, I have raised the ticket, okay, for the discovery number two. You can uh, try discovery number three. Okay. Okay. We have already discussed the discovery number three also. Like the function. So do I do perform a reset or I skip reset? No, 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 perform reset. Click on perform reset. Running, let me see how it goes.
it support bgp it also support static house okay now So eleven dot two is there. Eleven dot one is there. on my R two. We have some external route. For example, uh, here let me take fifty, sixty, seventy, and here we have eighty and ninety routes. Getting my point? So these are what my external routes external routes okay so what is my requirement my requirement is my end point 1 and end point 2 should communicate to the external route okay when i am telling that thing they should communicate to the external route that means i have to do the routing to reach these ip subnets because inside my bd i have 20.0.0.254 and 30.0.0.254 right now so if you want to reach here from here to here you have to configure a l3 out if you want to reach these ip subnets so from here to here you have to configure l3 out if both the side if you configure the ospf protocol both the ospf protocol will be separate separate in the sense right they are for the different processes okay so according to your discovery number 5 on one side they are going to configure ospf and on another side they are going to configure the bgp okay so till now it is what l3 out l3 out okay now what do you mean by transit routing transit routing meaning is that i want these subnet should be reach here and these subnet should reach to here at that time this aci network will be the transit network getting a point getting a point guys yes that's uh, okay um. okay 
So firstly, I'm going to show you OSPF and the BGP configuration. Okay, how to do that configuration? You have already done this particular stuff in the last course with the Miller. Okay, but no issues. I am doing a recap of that. Okay, so mm, we have a little bit less time. So firstly, I will just write down the steps for OSPA. I'll say out OSPA. So point number one, what do you have to do? Configure logical and physical construct for endpoint and verify communication so i'm telling that thing firstly do the configuration for these two endpoints and verify that thing they are able to communicate or not okay point number two do physical construct for external routers R1 and R2. Do the physical connectivity for R1 and R2. Okay. Only the physical one. Take the screenshot of this. Done. Yeah, done. Okay. Once this physical Connectivity done. Then what you will do? Configure external routed domain and associate AAEP and VLAN pool. So whatever external routed domain you are creating, then associate your AEP and the VLAN pool there. Okay. Clear my point? Next point. Take the screenshot, guys. Next point. After this, configure L3 out from logical construct. Configure L3 out from the logical construct. This particular point having lots of lots of steps. So mostly the student will do the mistake here. Okay. Once this L3 out is working fine, then if L3 out configuration is fine. Neighborship form and external routers 
शेयर एक्सटर्नल राउटर शेयर राउट टू एसी ओके सो वट विल हैपन these routes will reach here these routes will reach here okay take the screenshot yes guys screenshot done yes done next point on this fabric there is a protocol which name is mpbgp which is by default running there okay so whatever protocol is carrying these routes till now on this leaf these routes are ospf route and these routes are what bgp route okay so when leaf 101 and 102 they receive that route they will redistribute automatically into the bgp automatically okay but what will happen these routes will not reach to the leaf 101 and 80 and 90 will not reach to the leaf 102 okay so what you have to do screenshot is done right guys can i clear this one uh just a second yeah okay external routes reach to leaf switches and redistributed automatically to mp bgp next point we have to configure spine as root reflector to exchange routes between if you will not configure this spine as a route reflector na leaf 101 and 102 they will not exchange the route okay take the screenshot shut down okay now once you do this thing the routes will be exchanged but the external routers still not receive the aci route aci route meaning is 20 and 30 if the external routers are not having the 20 and 30 routes then how they will send the return traffic external routers not receive aci routes so what is the solution for that point number 1 feeding subnets the scope of these are by default private to vrf feeding subnet scope 
you have to put advertise externally when you put this option na then only these routes will go to the external subnet otherwise no point number 2 L3 out unit must be L3 out unit must be associated with BD. Take the screenshot of this. Now the routes are exchanged completely. Still no communication. Still no communication. And solution is gone by. So you have to make a contract here to here, contract here to here. Getting my point? Yeah. So firstly, I will show you the L3 out of BGP as well as OSPF and then top of that, I will configure what the transit routing. Getting my point? That's okay. okay. So I think uh, right now you have like uh, 1 p.m., right? Yes. So let's take the lunch break PM. and have uh, let's take the lunch break and after that we will do this L3 out. This lab is very important as per to the production environment. In every production environment you will get such scenarios. Okay. Okay. One thing. Uh, just do one confirmation. R1 and R2 they are working fine. R3 and R4. Who is using R3 and R4? Can you tell like R1, R3 and R4 they are working in the last week? <coughs> yes, they were working. R5 and R6? And R7 and R8? No, also working. That was me. So last week all these devices are working, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So what I will do, I will take R1 and R2 as a external router and I will take uh, R7 and R8 as a endpoint. Getting my point? Okay. Okay. So we'll do this lab after the lunch break. Clear? That's clear. Cool then. Let's take the lunch break and after that we will do this lab. Okay. Okay then. Start the discovery number five. Okay. So I will show you this lab in Coinic DC and then you have to perform this lab activity there. Start the discovery number five, guys. R7, R8, 1 slash 23, leaf 101, leaf 102, spine 201. R7 and R8, these are my endpoint, which is under app EPG. Okay. Here we have a R2. 
that is my external router okay and here i have 50 60 and 70 routes i will put here 12 subnet 12.1 is there 12.2 is there interface is 1 slash 12 and this is gig 0 slash 1 <clears throat> From here to here, firstly, I'm going to do L3 out. Okay. L3 out OSPF. Let firstly verify the OSPF one. Okay. And then I will do this R1 also connected on 1 slash 12. And here I have routes, let's say 80 and 90. And here subnet is 12, 11, sorry. Dot one. And here I will do BGP. Okay. And after that, there is a slight difference between like uh, how to do the transit routing. This slight option we have to select. So, firstly, let's do these two L3 out. Okay. So, whatever points I have told to you, based on that, I'm going to do the configuration. So point number one, we have to do the physical configuration and logical configuration for our endpoints. Okay, so let's do that thing. I'm creating a test VLAN. Allocation mode static. Let's say 500 to 600. Static allocation. Okay, submit. After that, we have to create a physical domain for our endpoint. Test physical domain. Associate the VLAN pool here. Just a second. There is a pre configuration already there. Let me just delete that configuration. Otherwise, it can create some issue. Create a VLAN pool. Test VLAN pool. Allocation mode static. VLAN 500 to 600. Static allocation. Okay. Submit. Domain. Physical domain. VLAN pool. Submit. Then point number three, we had to create the AAEP. Let's say test AEP. Associate our domain, which is the physical domain. Create the policies, link level policy. So I will create two link level policy here. One is for 100 MB. One policy for one gig. CDP policy. Then we have to create a interface profile. Sorry, policy group first. Policy group, let's say I'm creating 400 MB. Associate the policy. Associate the AAEP. Later on, I need one, one gig policy group also. So I'm creating that thing right now. So I have created two policy groups. Fine. 
then interface profile interface profile for endpoint endpoints are connected on port number 23 1/23 and policy group is for 100 mb my endpoints are connected with 100 mb okay endpoint for external routers my external routers are connected on port number 12 1/12 and 1 gig policy then then i had to create a switch profile let's say leave switch profile 1 <coughs> Zero two. This is just a name. <coughs> Select our leaf devices where our endpoint and external routers are connected. Next, associate the interface profile. Done. My physical configuration is done. I will verify that thing. CDP neighbor. Okay. It is showing me the neighborship. That's perfectly fine. Show IP interface brief. Config the interface step A zero by zero. No. CDP. In fifty, interface F is the result. No CDP name. Show CDP neighbor. Addition correctly. No issues. The wrong entry will go automatically. So it is showing me. Where is that? Where is that? This one. One zero two. Fine. Config T. Interface F A zero slash one. Let's say IP address thirty dot zero dot one two five five dot zero dot zero. No shirt and exit. IP route. I'm just defining that default gateway here, which I will define thirty dot zero dot zero dot two fifty four later on. Here, config T interface F A zero slash one IP address twenty dot zero dot one two five five dot zero dot zero. No shirt exit. Inter uh, sorry. IP route zero dot zero dot zero. Okay. Now the logical configuration. Let's say I'm giving a name sales tenant. Under this. I'm going to create a VRF. Let's say VRF one. Next, VD one. Finish. In the VD one, I'm going to define two subnets here. My endpoint connected on these subnet. Okay. 
currently the scope is private to vrf so that means that particular subnet can exist or can communicate within the vrf not outside the vrf then application profile 1 I can create a PPG. EPG must be associated with the VD one. Associate our physical domain which we have created so that it will get the physical and logical communication, and define the endpoint into the EPG. So, one zero one associated with the port number twenty three. VLAN, let's say 500. Similar way. 102. 23. 500. Yes. After that, just a verification. My endpoints are communicating or not. Thing. 20.0.254. Firstly, I'm sending the traffic to my gateway. Gateway is pinging. Okay. If I try to ping my 30.0.0.1, which is the R8 router IP address. Okay. It is also communicating. Clear? Yes, guys. Any confusion till now? This lab you have done into your last course also last week. Yeah. Any confusion? all good great so according to our topology if i go to my topology where is that i have tested this thing these two end points are having 20.0.0.1 30.0.0.1 and under my bd i have defined the subnets 20.0.0.254 and 30.0.0.254 these two endpoints are able to communicate why because they belongs to the same app epg clear now we yeah. have to reach here okay so on r2 i'm accessing the r2 now where is r2 r2 is this show ip interface brief here we have 20 i will change that one 50 60 70 is there uh go back to 150 no interface loop back the interface fa Zero slash one. Sorry, gig. Interface gig zero slash one. IP address twelve dot zero dot two two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero. And no shit. It's to show IP protocol. Okay. to show ip route okay to show run and this is on okay there is one route let me delete that one you can do that on r2 i just configure the ip address and the loopback now on r2 i am going to configure the ospa protocol router ospf1 okay router id uh let's say here i am putting router id 22.22.22 .22 .22. then network 
12 wild card mass then area 0 then 50 60 and 70 ospf configuration is done okay if i check here show ip ospf neighbor i will not get any neighbor why because l3 out is not configured on aci side getting my point any confusion guys till now no okay how to do l3 out configuration for l3 out point number 1 you need to configure one l3 out external routed domain and associate the aep and the vlan pool so external routed domain in the new version it is l3 out domain okay they rename it so i can put here l3 out external domain associate the aep which we have already associate the vlan pool then then go to your logical config under the logical configuration under networking you are getting external routed network in the new version 5.x and 6.x this is l3 out network right click create a routed out site be more focused here there will be lots of steps are coming here name so any meaningful name you can give uh, i'm going to configure l3 out ospf so i can give l3 out ospf what protocol you want to use i want to use ospf what area id you want to configure i want to configure area id 0 it is not a nssa area it is not the sub area it is a regular area then which vrf vrf 1 what is your external domain out external i put a wrong name there okay any confusion in this particular window any confusion guys focus here root control subnet import option is not highlighted export option is by default enabled okay this is for basically which route you want to exchange import and export so i can use this option also no issues okay now next is what node and interface profile click on the plus sign node node 102 102 is connecting to the ospf router node you can select the node 102 what router id let's say 2.2.2.2 here is the option to configure the static route guys click on okay ospf interface profile under this ospf interface profile if there is a authentication ospf authentication on r2 then you have to put here the same ospf authentication okay now here you have to create a ospf policy ospf interface policy network type is broadcasts no need to change the default timers next 
Now, when you are going to make the TCP connection with the external router, you can use the routed interface, you can use the SVI, you can use the sub interface. So if our external device is a router, so I can use the routed interface or routed sub interface. If the external device is SVI, which is in your case when you are doing the lab, they are using a catalyst switch, so they will use the SVI there. Okay, but with respect to the configuration, with respect to the options, all options are same. So I'm going to use the routed interface here. Leaf one zero two. It is connected with the port number twelve. What IP address? Twelve dot zero dot zero dot one slash eight. MTU. The by default MTU is fifteen hundred. Okay. Click on OK. Click on OK. And next now. Now, whenever you are going to configure L2 out and L3 out, one external EPG will be created. So, I'm giving a name. OSTF external EPG. Under the subnet. So currently, I'm just defining here, let's say 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0.0, all the subnets. And by default option is external subnet for external EPG. That means when you are creating the contract, it will be applicable for all the subnets. Here you can use like 650, 60, and 70 also, usual one, okay? Currently, I'm just going with the simple L3 out. I will discuss the transit routing options also, guys. Okay, finish. I told you that thing, once you configure the L3 out, okay, your neighborship will form. If I check here, previously there is no neighborship. Now the neighborship start. Let's wait for a few more seconds. Okay, so you can see here my neighborship is formed perfectly, no issues. And R2 neighbor is 2.2, and who is the 2.2? Lee 102. Okay. Now, if neighborship formed, show IP route, you can see here there is no 20 and 30 route, right? But if I see on the ACI side, in the ACI, I am receiving 50, 60, and 70 route. Getting my point? So I told you that thing like, okay, external router will share the route to the ACI fabric, but ACI fabric is not exchange the route. And why they are not exchanging the route? The reason is here. They are private to VRF. Okay. So what do you have to do? Here we have to select the option advertise externally. Advertise externally. When you choose this option advertise externally, these routes are eligible to go outside. And in the BD, You have to associate your L3 out. We have created this L3 out OSPF. Done. After this configuration, if I check the route on R2, you can see now 
those two routes are coming clear any question till now guys any question anyone no okay. no so the routes are exchanged completely okay I'm on R8. If I try to ping, let's say 50.0.1, I'm not able to communicate. Why? Because my R8 endpoint under app EPG and the external routes are under the external EPG. So we need what? A contract. So let's create a contract. test contract under this test contract subject you can put any name also and filter i am choosing here default common like permit ip and email i will apply this contract as a provider under my epg and I will consume that contract in my L3 out. Here. Consume contract. Once I did this part, R3 will start communicating. So it be route. This is correct. Show run. Lots of extra routes are there. Is brief. There is lots of extra configuration. Yeah. 
the interface brief. This is up to show IP route. No, show. Can I ping 30.0.0.254? Gateway is pinging. Ping 12.0.0.1. It's pinging. Ping 12.0.0.2. It's pinging. Ping 50.0.1. It's not pinging. That means the issue is on R2. R2 is show IP interface brief. 50 is there. Okay. No interface. Move back zero. Look one, look at two. Interface loopback zero, IP address fifty dot zero dot one, two five five dot zero dot zero. Interface loopback one, IP address sixty dot zero dot one. To show IP interface brief. IP address are there. To show IP protocol. Advertise correctly. No issues. Ping. <clears throat> Ping. 30.0.254. Traffic is reaching to the gateway, going to the endpoint. So it should also communicate now. Sixty dot zero dot one. I'm receiving all these routes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm.
person press route 50.0.1 it should communicate okay correct firstly it is sending to the gateway this is correct It provided this is also correct. My submits are advertised externally. This is also correct. Associated with the VRF, this is correct. Associated with this, and this is also correct. There is the issue now. Guys, let me check. I'm checking everything from the beginning. Okay. If I miss anything, VLAN pool is associated here. This is fine. Show CDP neighbors. I'm getting the leap neighborship. That means my physical configuration is fine. Shoe is with the logical one. We have created a VRL. CD under BD, I have advertised these subnets and CD is associated with the VRF. This is also fine. And then EPG, I have EPG associated with the domain. Defining the, the static port as an endpoint. So this is also correct. I'm able to reach twelve dot two. That means my 
M3 out is working fine because if I check here, show run. I define the default gateway. This is perfectly fine. Okay, we'll see that thing with respect to our configuration. There is no issue in the configuration. If the issue issue is on R2, maybe on the OSPF routing. We will check that thing. Okay. Now on another end, I have to configure the BGP. So for the BGP, almost similar steps. What I will do with the BGP, I will put this under AS100 and this I will put under AS200. Okay. And in between, I'm going to configure the BGP. Let's see. So I have already configured the L3 out domain. This one, which is already associated. Now I'm just doing the logical configuration. external routed network. L3 out BGP this time. Okay. Let's configure the BGP on R1 also. Show run. Let me check. Is there any configuration there? BGP configuration is there, OSPF is also there. No router OSPF 10. No router BGP 200. No IP route. No. 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 This one. Let's check on. This particular endpoint also, is there any extra configuration? Sure, and run okay, this is correct next to configuration do show IP interface brief here we have 8081. 80, 90, and 100 route. Okay. The first thing interface gig 0 slash 1. Here it should be 11 IP address. 11.2.255.0.0.0. No shut. Interface 
get zero slash two no IP address and share it. Okay. So it will run. So router BGT two hundred. Neighbor eleven dot zero dot zero dot one remote AS hundred. So remote AS hundred I will configure on my leaf one zero one. Okay. Then network eleven uh, Eighty ninety and hundred. So I have configured the BGP on R one. Show IP BGP summary if I'm checking. So right now it is showing my neighborship stuck in active state. Okay, no issues. Why? Because I haven't configured the BGP on the ACI set right now. So L3 out BGP. I want to configure the BGP. Select the VRF. External routed domain. Let's say node 101. One zero one router ID, let's say one dot one dot one. BGP peer connectivity profile. So my peer IP address is eleven dot zero dot two slash eight. Okay. EBGP multi hope, I can define ten. Remote AS is 200, my local AS will be the 100. Okay. Interface profile. BGP interface profile. Next. I don't have any BGP authentication, so no issues. Next. Here you can define leaf 101 1 slash 12 IP address 11 dot 0 dot 1 slash 8 MTU 1500 click on OK OK click on OK next BGP external EPG. So here I can also put external subnet for external EPG. No issues. Okay. Done. After this, BGP state is established. That means my neighborship form. I can check here. Previously, it stuck into the active state. But now if I check. Fine. It is not receiving any prefix. So what we have to do. Under my BD. Advertise externally already done. Thus, you have to associate your L3 out unit there.
show IP routes. So if you see 20 and 30 routes are here on R1, which is my BGP router and show IP route. 20 and 30 routes are here getting my point. So firstly, it is giving me that acknowledgement. My L3 out is working fine. Getting my point guys. Any confusion? Any confusion? I'm okay. So both the L3 out BGP and OSPF is working fine. There is no issue. Now, what is this transit routing? I want to share or exchange these routes to R1 and R1 route should be here. And at that time, this I, this ACI network will behave as a service provider. Let's say transit route. Okay. So for that, still we have missed one particular point under the system tab. System settings, BGP root reflector. Your spine node should be the route reflector so that the route will be exchanged across the leaf device. Fabric policy code. Code one. Under this code policy group, you have to associate your BGP root reflector policy. And this root reflector policy should be here. Then. Okay. Now, let me try now. I think why this BGP is not working. It should communicate. Our L3 out routes are exchanged already. Okay. So under the L3 out transit routing. So under this, they are doing the similar kind of stuff. So if you see, they have one router. Let's say this router in our case, this is R2 and this is R1. Okay. Here they have configured L3 out OSPF, which is already done. And here they are going to configure L3 out BGP. They are putting the same kind of stuff, like say 0 0.0.0. 0 .0. If you want to do the transit routing, okay, let me just show you once again. I'm on R1, and on R1, if you see, you don't have 50, 60, and 70 route, right? 50, 60, and 70. And if you see here, on R2, you are not getting 80, 90, and 100 routes. Clear? Right, guys? On R2, yeah. we don't have 80, 90, and 100. Okay. So, let's go to our L3 out. Firstly,
export root control subnet okay focus on that okay aggregate export okay same thing i am doing under the ospf export root now let's verify If you see here, 80 and 90 routes are coming. 80, 90, and 100. These routes are present in my R1. Okay, as a DGP route. And if I go to my R1, Here they reach perfectly. Here also they will come. BGP is a slow protocol, so sometime it take time. It will come here also. Okay, just give me a second. हाँ, मीटिंग ओके मैं ना आठ बजे का कॉल करता हूँ समरी Learn the four IP subnets. See, that is the fourth one. Show IP BGP. BGP Twelve also coming. 
those routes are also come if the 12 is coming now so that route also come otherwise this 12 also not come So they have this particular lab L3 out OSPF L3 out BGP. Okay, they have their these remote network 172.16.100.100 and 199.00 and 200. So they have already configured the OSPF that working fine. They are checking the OSPF neighborship and other stuff. Everything is fine. Thinking. Then they are going to configure the L3 out BGP. Whatever steps we have done, the same similar steps they are going to perform. Just what you are doing here, there will be the GUI little bit different. The graphic GUI will be the different because that they have the updated version in the screenshot. We have similar configuration. IP BGP star. Maybe that 50, 60 is creating the issues in OSPF also. Not. That's why those are not coming. Otherwise, everything is working fine. Cool. Guys, try to complete this lab. 
enable the transit routing okay uh, Discovery number five is started for everyone. Sam, Nicholas, Lord Sam. Discovery five. Mine is started. Mine is ready. Mine is also ready. Ready? Then start the lab. Discovery five. This lab is very important. If you are going for, uh, let's say, CCI data center lab examination, this is very, very important lab. 